All right, so in this video, we're gonna focus on using the slope formula. I know we had a little bit of struggling with it, so I'm gonna go over some practice, some problems. So we're gonna start with number five. So if you look at number five on your worksheet, the first thing that we need to do is write m is equal to, and we're gonna go ahead and write our formula down. That's y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead at this point and we can move forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that equal to, and you can use some scratch paper in the class. Use some copier paper if you'd like, so you can work these out so you have plenty of room because this is going to take up a little bit of room. I now need to label my two points. I have point I and then I have point J. And they give me an ordered pair. That's my ordered pair for I. That's my ordered pair for J. And I want to group them. So the first one, because this is the first one, I'm just going to call that my x1 and my y1. So I'm going to write that on top, x1 and y1. Now my second set, I'm going to go ahead and label that x2 and y2. Now this is important to label it because when we go back to it, we need to know where to plug our numbers in. And we don't want to get them mixed up or to give us the wrong answer. So for instance, in our formula, it says the first thing we write is y2. So if I go back up here to my y2, that value is 1. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. So let's see. I'm going to put 1. I'm going to put parentheses around it. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to put parentheses. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I did notice that in the calculator, we do need to put parentheses in closing this entire statement. And the same thing on the bottom. Or it won't come out right. So I ran into that earlier today. So just keep that in mind. And I'll show you and demonstrate it when we put it in the calculator. So we have R1 for, for Y2 goes right here because that's Y2. Then we're going to subtract that from our Y1, which is this one right here. That's our Y1. And if we go up here, remember that if this is Y2, then our other set has Y1. So we're going to put that 6 in place of it. Now we're going to go ahead and we need to put our X2. So our x sub 2 is going to be x2, which is right here. And that value is negative 1. So I'm going to put negative 1 minus. And now I'm going to plug in my x1, which notice that's our x1 right there. And that value is 0. I'm going to set that equal to. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator to put that in. So if we do that, Here's my calculator. Now I'm going to move this up so you can see what keys I'm hitting. The first thing we do is we hit control and then we need to hit our divide button. When we do that, it brings up our fraction bar. You see that right there? And now we're just going to put our problem in the top of there. So I'm going to scoot this paper over. And we're going to match up what I have. So I'm going to put parentheses because I told you you should put it in parentheses. And by the way, if you forgot where that was, this left hand button is my parenthesis key. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put in my positive 1, because that was a positive 1, and then minus 6. Then I'm going to go down by pushing this button right here. And I need to go ahead and put another set of parentheses. And now our value, if you look, we have negative 1 minus 0. So we're going to type that in. Our negative sign is this button right here. So we're going to put negative 1 and then minus 0. I'll bring it back down. You'll see that I have that in there now. So we have negative 1 minus 0. Now I'm just going to right tab over and hit enter. And it tells us that the slope is 5. And that is our answer. Since it's a whole number, that is what we're going to put in for our answer. If it were a fraction, then we would need to go ahead and convert it. I'm not rephrase that. If it was a decimal, we would need to go ahead and convert it to a fraction. But as it is, since it's a whole number, that's our final answer. We don't need to go any further.